Coming up to down the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig. Thankfully, we've already secured our passage through to the knockouts of the conference leagues with only a few games left before the winter break. It is time now to focus on the Bundesliga. And if we don't win these games, we might end up in the relegation zone. <laughs> Episode 77 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does If you might hope you are doing well and come up today, we take on both Bayer Leverkusen and Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga, needing some quite good results from these games. If we lose both, we could end up quite close to the relegation zone, but if we win them, we could get close to a European spot. So it's a big episode prior to the winter break. If you're looking forward to it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we've played a couple of games off the back of yesterday's episode included one in the conference league against Luzern thankfully picked up a win in that game but then backed it up with a 3-1 defeat against Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga if you missed that episode I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner since then First things first, picked up a win as expected in the Conference League over Vozdevac. That was expected, considered a late goal, but up until then, it was a very comfortable performance. And that win does mean that we are unbeaten after four games. And as you can see, it does mean we are going to at least make our way through to that first knockout round. But hopefully, with games left against Trabs on Spore and Athletic Bilbao, we can do enough to make sure we go straight through to the round of 16. That last game could be quite interesting also because... On the next match day, Athletic Bilbao, they take on Lille. So they could be under a bit of pressure there, potentially Athletic Bilbao going in to that final game of the season. A chance there for some of our rivals near the top of the table to potentially drop some points. Not that it matters too much during the league phase, but in and around that result, our Bundesliga form continues to be pretty poor. Off the back of taking on Hoffenheim, we took on an inform Eintracht Frankfurt and unfortunately... Off the back of grabbing an early second half penalty to Alban Krasnicki immediately, Kolomwani did grab an equaliser for Eintracht Frankfurt. He has a pretty ridiculous goal scoring record against us. And then with 20 minutes left, Bonanote, who I believe is a player who might be on loan from someone like Manchester City. In fact, no, that's not the case. Maybe that's coming from a different save of mine, but he is quite a useful player. He grabbed a winner with 20 minutes left. A couple of offside goals, which were very close calls, got ruled out for us. Off the back of that, but another home defeat, two straight, including that one in the yesterday's episode. And it did mean, at that stage, it was three losses from our last four Bundesliga games. Thankfully, got somewhat back on track prior to today's episode against her for Berlin. But it was hardly convincing, considering we played against 10 men all last hour of this game. Of course, we won with 10 men against Schalke earlier this season. But they picked up a red card at the half-hour mark. Unfortunately, too sad. Actually, got a goal to put them in front with 15 minutes left. But thankfully, Alban Krasnicki grabbed us a goal just as injury time was starting. And thankfully, we walk out of that game with something. Because look at the stats. It would have been absolutely heartbreaking if we got nothing from that game. So pretty poor form in the Bundesliga. But thankfully, doing the job in Europe. But it does mean these two games in today's episode are quite big. Hence, we're coming back for Bundesliga games and not the one against Trubs on Spore. In the Conference League, we're currently 11th on the Bundesliga table, six points clear of Hanover. In that relegation playoff spot, not too far back to the likes of Hertha Berlin and Sandhausen in that automatic relegation zone. But currently, smack being in the middle of the European spots and the relegation zone. So hopefully, we can pick up some results in today's episode and get a bit of a gap on those teams down near the bottom of the table and get ourselves back to being a bit closer to qualifying for Europe it again next season, albeit if we do drop points in today's episode, as I said late last week, maybe the Conference League is going to be the best chance for us to make Europe yet again next season, albeit it would be in the Europa League. So mixed form coming in to today's episode. Hopefully it will pick up, especially in this first game that we do take on by Leverkusen. and these guys are struggling a little bit yet again this season. Predicted to finish sixth, they are down in 13th in recent form also. Not too great. They bet Sandhausen, as everyone seems to be doing, and also bet Stud Rene in the Europa League. But around that, a loss to Fenerbahce, and also heavy ones to Bayern Munich and Hoffenheim 
in the Bundesliga, to be fair, we are probably the weakest opposition they've played outside of Sunhausen for a little bit, but hopefully, with this one being at home, we can pick up a decent result, albeit they've got some good players in that team, like Florian Wurtz and Ilex Mariba in particular, as well as the goalkeeper that we did meet when we took on Cluj in that final qualifying round of the Conference League. He made a transfer in and around deadline day, did other than Cuckoo, so we meet him again, hopefully he isn't in quite as good a form as he was during that Conference League qualifier. I know we won it comfortably, but he was actually quite impressive for the Romanian outfit. They paid £3 million there for that goalkeeper. Quite a steal, truth be told, but hopefully we can put some goals past them yet again and pick up three important points in the Bundesliga. And just one injury concern going into this first game of today's episode. Manuel is still out with a pool green, but hopefully he should be available for that second game. We do take on Borussia Dortmund, but hopefully we can pick up a win here and at least get ourselves a bit further away from the relegation zone because no doubt that Dortmund one is going to be tough with those guys up in second on the Bundesliga table, and they'll come into that game off the back of a 3-1 win over an inform Hoffenheim. And in terms of our team going to this first game of today's episode, a little bit of rotation. We've got Votchen at right back in place of Sicker. He's just not quite in as good as form these days as Votchen. Also, we're going to be playing Olte at centre-back in place of a tired Hitaro, and the same applies for Krasnicki over Mastis. On the right wing, so those are our three changes in terms of our starting lineup. Also, Racine Bullock and Tom Gale are on the bench, still not quite sure about Amadou in terms of a centre-back. So Tom Gale currently ahead of him on the picking order and thinking I probably should have loaned out Amadou and kept Carl Henson at the club. Of course, he is down, I believe, at Union Berlin in the two Bundesliga from memory. So of course, we take those guys on in the third round of the DFB Pockle that might be coming up in tomorrow's episode, but hopefully before then, we can pick up a win in today's episode. This does look like the game it's most likely to happen in, albeit, as I said, some quite good players in that Bayer Leverkusen team in particular, Florian Wurtz and Ilex Marie, reminder of what the table does look like. Some points from this game would be very nice indeed, obviously, with Borussia Dortmund doing a pretty good job this season. Last season, they got off to a slow start. Thanks to our opening day win over them this season, they have been on the ball a little bit more, albeit Bayern Munich are certainly still the team dominating the league at this stage. But 20 minutes in so far, not much has happened in this game, albeit now it's a free kick in our favour. Escobar puts this one towards the far post. It's headed away, but it does fall back there to Cueto, but unfortunately, a bit of a poor pass there. Merlin is on the ball, and they'll try and play out from the back here. Will Bayer Leverkusen in the all red, we're in our traditional yellow with the blue shorts. We try and put some pressure there on Ilex Mariba, nice and high up the pitch. We nearly get the ball back there, and we eventually do through Unhello down our left hand side. Now, Camilio plays that one to Ryan at left back today. Unhello, who got that ball back for us, makes his way for briefly. Escobar starts to make his way in field a bit, plays a lovely ball over there for Johnny Unhello, only his third goal of the season for the young Colombian left winger, but thankfully. He was the one who got that ball back for us, so it's rather justified. He puts it in the back of the net. Good little play there between him and Sebastian Escobar. The Colombians, they link up nicely and good finish there at the first time of asking. I believe that was with his left foot, and we take a 1-0 lead halfway through the first half. And so far, I've been on the front foot in this game as well, so hopefully that continues and we can pick up three very important points in this game. Now, Johnny Anhalo has picked up a yellow card, so it does mean he might come off at half time for Bushuari, who to be fair has been in quite good form of late now down the other end here. It is a Bayer Leverkusen corner. Thankfully, we deal with that one at the near post, albeit they put that one back into the mixer. And Dem Bogander is able to put that one away. Hopefully, he was offside. We are waiting here for a VAR check that would be frustrating if we can see right off the back of taking a lead. But thankfully, he was offside. We keep hold of our 1 0 lead. As you can see, it does mean we would go up the table quite significantly, and thankfully, he was an absolute mile offside when that ball was played over the top from Sir Ken. So, thankfully, we are still in front by one goal to nil, albeit now by Leverkusen starting to come back at us here in the latter stages of this first half. Yet again, a chance there for Dean Bogadin, but thankfully, that one comes off the post. We can clear our lines, just fought there potentially about adjusting some instructions, but to be fair, don't think we need to do that until we do get into the sheets potentially at half time. So they came at us late in that first half, especially in the air, but thankfully that nice Colombian link up 
for that goal to Johnny Unhello does mean we go into the sheds with a 1-0 lead, albeit stats-wise by Leverkusen with that late flurry do look like. They are on the front foot. We'll take off Unhello on that yellow card, despite the fact he is the goal scorer for Bushuari, but I think that's all that we're going to do here going in to the second half. We'll also make sure Bushuari does ease off tackles, and hopefully we'll tell the guys they're doing well, capable of better. We can hold on here what would be three important points to get back on track in the Bundesliga as we kick off the second half here with that 1-0 lead. And there is a very early highlight here, only a couple of minutes into the half. We are on the ball, try and play a ball over the top there for Krasnicki. Unfortunately, the race that is won by a Bayer Leverkusen player, but thankfully Olte so far doing a pretty good job on that right-hand side of our central defence. He gets the ball back for us now. Bushawari does get in behind. Nice ball played through there to Amadori, but Kuku comes up with yet another big save against us. As I said, even though we did beat Cluj quite comprehensively in that final qualifying round of the conference leagues, unfortunately nothing comes from the corner. He did make quite a few good saves in particular in that first leg. And he's doing it again here in this Bundesliga clash, just making our way 10 minutes into the second half. And Ryan at left back is only on a 6.4. So Paolo Cesar can come on for him and hopefully that will just strengthen up our defence a little bit, especially in terms of in the air, because that was an area we were getting threatened quite a bit late in that first half, but we're making our way towards the last 20 minutes of this game, thankfully, still with that 1-0 lead, and not much has happened in this half, apart from that chance to Amadori, now a few players are down to Red Hearts, Mustis and Xerxes can come on for Krasniki and for Plato, and also Amadori only on a 6.5, so Matt White can come on for him, he's done a decent job of late, in the conference league for us, there'll be all our subs used, and hopefully these guys, with those fresh legs, albeit most of them are up front, can make sure we can hold on here and pick up three points, as I said earlier. That'd be big in the Bundesliga chance there for Harvey Vale on that right wing, but thankfully tight angle blazes that one just high and wide, but shortly off the back of that, with about 12 minutes left in this game, it is a goal kick here to Bayer Leverkusen. They look to play out from the back. Hopefully, we can put some good pressure on them here, nice and high, and we do. Through Paulo Cesar plays that one forward to Bushuari, albeit a little bit loose on the ball there, but we thankfully get it back from the clearance, and Cesar is on the ball yet again. This time, nice ball for Bushuari. Tries to put that one into Maddie White, but unfortunately can't quite get on the end of it before a Bayer Leverkusen player does. We'll see what this highlight does amount to. Now, Mustis does get in behind and bangs that one away. I think he's onside he is, and that makes it 2-0, and hopefully... That's the goal that puts this one to bed and we can pick up our first three points in a little while in the Bundesliga and also for the first time at home in the Bundesliga as well for a little while. But that's a nice ball over the top yet again from Escobar. So the Colombian will pick up two assists and Mustis blast that one away from a quite similar angle to what Anhalo did down the other end. In the first half, we make our way towards the last couple of minutes of this game. Maybe would be a good idea to potentially time waste, albeit there's a highlight here just as I thought about doing that, a free kick now for Escobar, having a very good game, is that deep lying playmaker on support, tries to put that one top right corner, goes just over the bar, and now we will start to time waste a little bit more, and also be more disciplined, also tell our goalkeeper to slow the pace down, and hopefully that will be all she wrote for this one by Leverkusen, they move to a 4-2-3-1, they now will be in a bit of trouble potentially of finding themselves down near that relegation zone, but a late free kick here to Bayer Leverkusen, hopefully nothing comes from it, and we can make sure that we do hold on here and pick up the three points. If we drop them from here, that would be very frustrating as Bomberman starts to make his way towards the edge of the box. Now, Botter, just on that edge, plays that one into the mixer. It somehow finds Harvey Val, not too sure what Ivozic was doing. He took a seat, but thankfully that header did go over the bar. There's a late highlight in this game, I dare say, it won't amount to much, but Ivozic does take his time on the ball, and thankfully we are keeping it at the back. Interesting ball there, but thankfully Ivozic did clear that one away, but Daniels plays things up at the back there for Bayer Leverkusen, albeit now we're on the ball down this right-hand side, but it kind of feels like a pointless highlight to end this game as Bayer Leverkusen. We put pressure on them at the back, still one minute left in this one, but it would be a big three points, and hopefully we could do something potentially against Borussia Dortmund, albeit away from home, that might be unlikely, but of course, we did beat them last season, even though it was at home, hopefully, we can do the same again, Harvey Vale does get a chance from that late highlight, but he is an absolute 
mile off zone by the time that Ivizic will take this free kick. That should be all she wrote, but that's going to be a big three points for us in the first game of today's episode. We don't even see the goal kick because full time gets blown. Pointless couple of late highlights in that game, considering the big chance did come from an offside, but thankfully a good defensive effort and thankfully got those goals through both Anhalo in the first half and Mastis off the bench in the second half. Both assists did come from Sebastian Escobar and we pick up our first win in the Bundesliga in a couple of games. And now, if we can pull off an upset against Borussia Dortmund in that second game of today's episode, might get ourselves a bit closer to the European hunt than it would be the relegation zone, but a good win there. 2-0 over by Leverkusen. We'll come back shortly before the Dortmund game. And we are back about to get stuck into the second game of today's episode against Borussia Dortmund before then Hertha Berlin have come in to offer us a job interview. We are going to turn that down but just thought it might be of interest to some of you. Those guys of course are down currently in 17th on the Bundesliga table so with us now up in 9th definitely not a move that I would be making even if this was a journeyman and not a one club save. But it is now time to take on Borussia Dortmund in the second game of today's episode. Those guys are still up in second on the table. They actually dropped down to 10th off the back of getting that job interview offer from Hertha Berlin. But these guys did beat us once last season. It was in the away game. We beat them at home, albeit in that game. They were missing both Yusuf and Makoko and Guedes on that right hand side. It does look like this time both of those players are available yet again, albeit big news due Bellingham is out with a broken ankle, so maybe that might help our chances a little bit, but Dortmund clearly going to this game as the favourites with a Dorotheo team just a little bit, yet again, going into this one, still some tired players having only played that previous game a couple of days prior to this one, things getting quite busy before we do head in to the winter break. So we've got Sicker back at right back for this one because Watchin is on a heavy workload. Also, Tom Gale starts both Orte and Hitado are quite injury prone, so he makes his way alongside Comedio at the back. It's our centre-back partnership from last season as well as that. As you can see, quite a few tired players in other areas. So we've got Cesar at left back. Both our defensive midfield backups are in, Mumwell and Benedetti. And as well as that, Mustis makes his way back into the team off the back of that goal from the bench, which did give us that 2-0 win over by Leverkusen. So quite a bit of change, but hopefully we've still got enough about us here to pick up a point, but it will be tough away at Borussia Dortmund, albeit as you saw before with no Jude Bellingham. That could help us out here is what Dortmund looked like without Bellingham. So those good players up front and the likes of Makoko and Guedes and also our left Suleimani is quite a promising wonder kid. There's our team as we ran through before. Quite a few changes, especially in terms of defense, but hopefully we can pick up another clean sheet. But as I said, away from home, this is going to be tough, but a win here gets us right back in the hunt for European football and also joint on points potentially with our rivals in RB Leipzig. But we'll see what happens here in this second game against second placed. We'll just see a Dortmund, but an early free kick here in our favor. Unfortunately, Anhalo can't quite link up with anyone, but thankfully it finds Queto on this left hand side. He passes that one back to Benedetti, plays that one over the top for Amadori, who will hit that one home, I believe. In fact, it might be Mastis. The goalkeeper for Dortmund there comes out and gets nowhere near it. And the goal has been awarded to no offside. It was a funny looking goal, but we'll take it. And this could be a big point coming from this game, even if it's just the draw there. Goalkeeper there in Cobble has an absolute shocker. I thought it was Amadori, apparently Mastis. It did highlight Amadori there, maybe. Got in the way a little bit, did the big tall Italian, but thankfully that's a very good start to this game. We take an early 1-0 lead, albeit straight away off the back of that. We go down the other end and Dortmund are uh, looking for an instant equaliser. Isaiah Emery plays that one back to Mane. Thankfully, we're keeping them there somewhat towards halfway and good interception there from Anhalo, but unfortunately lose touch and Zaire Emery does get the ball back there for the BVB. Now Guedes on the ball plays that one up to Gio Reyna, goes back here to Mamut down this right-hand side. Zale Emily Guedes here does get in behind. Squares that one for Makoko. Thankfully, a very weak shot. That's a big chance gone begging there for Borussia Dortmund to equalize just going past the 10-minute mark. And off the back of that, it is a free kick. Rainer puts this one towards the far post. Schuller just puts that one over the bar and we cling on to our 1-0 lead. But it's fair to say that early goal in our favor has woken Borussia Dortmund up here in front of the yellow wall. Now Cesar picks up a yellow card. He might have to come off for Ryan 
at half time having just come in for this game will get him to ease off tackles going in to the second part of this first half but off the back of that early goal but we'll see a Dortmund definitely on the front foot as the stats do suggest we were on the ball there but unfortunately give it away now Yusuf Makoko did sort of get in behind now rain off a long range effort thankfully that one goes over the bar but we'll see a Dortmund so far a little bit wasteful with these extra shots they are getting off in this game, albeit we've only had the one on target from our force of both teams. A little bit off target in terms of their shots so far. Now Mastis picks up a yellow card. He might also be coming off at halftime, but he's been quite good today in terms of goal scoring. Good to see he did struggle a little bit in the first part of the season. Does look like now he is finding some form, but only a few minutes shy of halftime. Still 1-0 up, albeit it is a free kick here to Dortmund. It gets played there into the mixer. Thankfully, we clear it away, but Mamut here just outside the box blazes that one, but it is quite wide. So thankfully, still 1-0 up Dortmund getting lots of shots off. But as I said before, thankfully, not too many on target despite the fact they are well and truly on the front foot. We do go into the sheds with that one. They'll leave thanks to that goal from Mastis off the back of a little bit of a goalkeeping shocker from Kobul for Borussia Dortmund. We're going to take off those players on yellow cards. So Ryan will come on at left back and also it will be Krasniki coming on for Mastis at right wing. But apart from that, pretty happy with how this is going, albeit not playing that well. So I think we'll tell the guys it again. Things are going well, but they are capable of better and hopefully... That gets a response in the second half. We can hold on yet again for what would be a big three points, especially this game, taking on a team who are well above us. On that Bundesliga table, we'll get the second half underway here with that one little advantage. Early stages, we do get a shot off, but now it is Borussia Dortmund who are on the ball. Zaya Emily plays that one up to Gio Reyna, Suleimani, and lots of space down this left-hand side. He opts the cut inside and tries to put that one top left corner. I think Makoko was in a lot of space, but thankfully... Did not search him out. Dortmund continue to be quite wasteful with their shots in this game. Now Amadori on a yellow card down to a 6.4. We'll bring on White for him. Make sure we keep 10 players on the pitch for this game. Obviously, we did win with 10 men against Schalke earlier this season. But I don't know if we can do that against a team like Borussia Dortmund. And now it's a free kick here in our favour. It finds its way there into Krasnicki. So again, we find our right winger from that free kick, but Kobel this time stays in goal and makes a decent save. The highlight will continue, and Suleimani somehow there gets in behind. It's a chance from there to chip the goalkeeper. It was Comedio a bit slow onto that ball, but thankfully, yet again, they missed the target, and with 25 minutes left, it is still 1-0 in our favour. And we might actually tell our guys to be more disciplined while we're here, and hopefully that just calms things down and makes sure we don't do anything silly in the final stages. Of this game, we're off the back of that good interception there from Manuel back in the team from his injury. Now, sicker down this right-hand side, can we grab a cushion goal to just ease things a little bit in terms of the nerves? What would be two big wins? In today's episode, White there with a good chance, but he was offside, and also he did miss the target. So it is still 1-0 so far. Both teams in this game, pretty wasteful with their shots, and now it is time for us here to make our last couple of subs. A few players down to Red Hearts. Vochum will come on for sicker at right back, and also Anhalo can come off for Bushuari. and while we're here, we might chuck both our defensive midfielders onto defend, we'll chuck Watchin onto support, and also Krasniki onto attack, so our forwards will be on attack, but our defenders will be on support, hopefully just means we're a bit more solid at the back, going into the later stages of this game, as we look to hold on to this one little advantage, to be fair, it does look like we're actually doing a bit more in terms of shots in the second half, potentially compared to Borussia Dortmund, Ryan picks up a yellow card to be fair. Don't think we need to get him to ease off tackles and going to the last five minutes. It is time for us now to start time wasting a little bit. Also, slow down the tempo and we'll get our goalkeeper to slow the pace down as well. And hopefully that will be enough for us to make sure there's no more highlights in this game. But Dortmund, as I've said a few times, quite wasteful with their shots. 16 overall, only four on target. Albeit, there's a late throw on here. It is in our favour. Hopefully, we can keep the ball and pick up three massive points. Six months from today's episode would be very good considering our Bundesliga form coming in to today's episode. Camillo plays that one back to Ivizic, who is quite a long way out from his goal. Tries to play a long ball over the top, but unfortunately, too much on that one. Kobel now goes for a bit of a wander, and it is there. One of the Dortmund players who I believe came off the bench makes his way forward. Now Suleimani cuts inside. It finds Guedes there in a good position, but Ivizic there with a very good save. And thankfully, 
that might be the big one that makes sure we pick up some points from this game. They still have a corner, but Tom Gale will head that one away. But Julian Brandt is just on the edge of the box. They still have the ball. Shawl for long range effort takes a big deflection, but they are still on the attack with only a few seconds left. Might also just here get our wing backs to go and defend and see if that stops this highlight from taking place. And we'll also tell our guys to time waste frequently. Not too sure if it's going to do much with the amount of time left in this game, but Dortmund, this will probably be the last chance from this set piece. But thankfully, Ivozic comes out and claims that one off the back of that big save before from that shot from Guedes. We just make our way now towards the 94 minute mark. And for the second time in two years, we beat Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. This time, it is in front of the yellow wall in the end. Actually, in terms of shots, wasn't actually that one-sided as it was threatening to be at stages during that first and second half in particular. But thankfully, off the back of us going a bit more disciplined, it did seem like we got our acting gear a bit more. And obviously, that early goal through Mastis from a poor error from Kerbal and goal for Borussia Dortmund did mean we pick up a 1-0 win to two good wins in today's episode. And as you can see, now we are right back in that hunt for European football, albeit there's lots of teams who are in that position. Freiburg are joined on points with us and not too far behind our Schalke and Fortuna Dusseldorf. But thankfully, we make our way up the table a little bit in today's episode off the back of two wins over Bayer Leverkusen and an upset one there away from home over second place Borussia Dortmund. So two good results from those games in today's episode, especially that second one against second place Borussia Dortmund. And thankfully for them, Bayern Munich have not made the most of their slip up. They lost 4-1 to Borussia Mönchengladbach all the way down in 12th. That is a big loss there for Bayern, so it does mean that Dortmund are still six points behind them. But we are right back in the European fight with only one more Bundesliga game left before we do head into the winter break, and that's actually quite a big one. We take on Freiburg. We'll bring you guys the result from that one come the start of tomorrow's episode, but that will do it for today. If you enjoyed that one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow off the back of the winter break i think we've got two games left in the conference league but with us being already qualified for that first knockout playoff round and really we should do enough in those last two games in particular that next one against trubs on sports will hopefully see us go straight through to the round of 16 we'll give you guys an update on the results from those last two league phase games and also the one against Freiburg in the Bundesliga. I think we'll skip Borussia Mönchengladbach first up from the break because we played those guys on camera come the start of the season and we'll come back and get stuck in to the third round of the DFB Pokal we'll taking on Union Berlin from the two Bundesliga. Those guys were expected to be the favourites in that league but are all the way down in 12th so it actually looks like quite a winnable game for us like it was earlier this season when we took on Paderborn these days. Those guys are down in a relegation playoff position, but Union Berlin hopefully can make our way through to the quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal yet again. And off the back of that, we'll host Fortuna Dusseldorf. Those guys currently just above Borussia Mönchengladbach on the table. So we'll come back for those two games in tomorrow's episode. And also, if anything happens in the transfer window, I'll update you guys on that. But hopefully... By that stage, we'll be through the round of 16 in the Conference League and also still in the hunt for a European qualifying spot through our position in the Bundesliga. But until tomorrow, off the back of the winter break for that cup third round tie against Union Berlin and that Bundesliga clash with Fortuna Dusseldorf. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.